Hi there, my name is Annie Alston and I'm a graphics engineer with Intel. Today I'm here to talk to you about the new and exciting updates to direct storage. Today's agenda will cover several topics on Direct Storage 1.1, Microsoft's latest API. We'll start with a brief overview by discussing its features and benefits. Next, we'll delve into one of the biggest improvements in Direct Storage 1.1, GPU decompression for asset streaming. We'll explore how this new feature can improve your application's performance. Following that, we'll review the architecture on Intel graphics and examine best practices for writing an optimized Direct Storage application. We'll discuss the key elements to keep in mind to ensure your application runs smooth and efficiently. Lastly, we'll look at Intel's Expanse and Microsoft's bulk load demo, which demonstrates the capabilities of Direct Storage 1.1 in action. This will provide a hands-on opportunity to see how Direct Storage 1.1 can benefit your projects. So let's get started and explore the exciting world of Direct Storage 1.1. Direct Storage 1.0, released in 2021, made file access as easy as drawing triangles. Over the last couple years, Intel has collaborated with Microsoft to co-engineer and optimize Direct Storage, a new game assets technology used for transporting and compressing game assets. This collaborative effort allows Direct Storage 1.1, released in November 2022, to discover and invoke highly optimized GPU decompression for Intel GPUs, including the latest Intel Arc GPU family. There are several optimizations with this version of Direct Storage, and I'll briefly speak on some of them. One optimization includes allowing games to leverage the benefits of NVMEs. When players install games directly on an NVMe solid state drive, load time is significantly decreased, resulting in faster application performance. Games that access the storage device directly without the need for the CPU to be involved in the data transfer reduces the overhead associated with traditional storage access methods. Direct Storage 1.1 improves the throughput of data transfer between the storage by reducing CPU utilization and allowing for more efficient data transfer operations, ultimately resulting in ultra-fast load times and improved performance in games. GPU decompression reduces the amount of data that needs to be processed, improving the overall performance of the system and allowing for more detailed and intricate graphics to be rendered. Overall, these improvements make Direct Storage 1.1 an attractive option for applications that require high-performance storage, such as gaming, machine learning, and data analysis. Okay, so let's explore the advantages of utilizing GPU decompression and asset streaming in gaming. Direct Storage 1.1 includes a brand new GPU decompression technology. The benefits of this technology includes faster level load times, as we saw earlier, game assets are loaded directly from an NVMe solid state drive to the GPU's memory, bypassing the system memory entirely. This process is faster and more efficient, allowing for more rapid and seamless asset loading and rendering. This results in smoother gameplay and reduced load times because games will stream just what the player sees just in time. This new version removes the CPU from the data decompression process and introduces GPU decompression. GPU decompression is well suited for processing large quantities of data, making it particularly favorable for demanding applications like resource-heavy gaming, thanks to its ability to execute operations in parallel. Bandwidth is reduced because data remains compressed until where it is needed in the GPU. Some of the requirements for Direct Storage 1.1 include DX12 Ultimate API and a GPU with Shader Model 6.0 support, such as Intel Arc. Direct X12 Ultimate, introduced in 2020, includes, a new, includes new features and capabilities for graphics rendering and game development. Direct Storage 1.1 enables developers to create more realistic and immersive gaming experiences while providing improved performance and efficiency. Intel has created a demo called Expanse to explore this usage and optimize performance, which we will see later on. Direct Storage 1.0 introduced significant benefits to performance, efficiency, and scalability. Direct Storage 1.1 now makes it even faster to load all the assets for a game level. Integrated with D3D12, compressed data such as textures and models are sent directly to the GPU and doesn't have to wait for CPU decompression. Modern graphic workloads treat high-speed storage as a read-only cache that is constantly loading assets. Streaming technology allows a scene with hundreds of gigabytes of assets to be supported by a significantly smaller amount of physical memory. This process bypasses the traditional storage stack bottleneck and enables the GPU to access game data faster and more efficiently since GPUs support far higher decompression bandwidths. Direct Storage 1.1 maximizes the potential of both the storage and GPU. 
Now that we've explored the benefits of GPU decompression, let's take a look at the direct storage architecture on Intel graphics. The Direct Storage 1.1 stack is designed to work together seamlessly to enable efficient and high-speed access to game assets. The stack consists of several layers, including the User Mode Direct Storage API. Game developers can use this to take advantage of direct storage functionality in their games. This API communicates with the Kernel Mode Direct Storage driver, which communicates between the game and storage device. The storage stack that runs on an NVMe solid state drive is responsible for handling the communication between the NVMe solid state drive and the rest of the system. This new storage stack is optimized for high speed data transfer and low latency access to game assets. The Intel DX12 driver decompresses from GPU, reducing CPU overhead and further speeds up asset load times. So here we take a closer look at the relationship between Direct Storage Runtime API and Intel's D3D12 driver. The Direct Storage API communicates with the D3D12 driver by using a set of functions and structures that are defined in the Direct Storage API header files. When an application requests data from the storage device, Direct Storage uses the appropriate APIs to communicate with the D3D12 driver and retrieves or writes the data to the GPU memory. The Direct Storage API also provides functions for managing the GPU memory and synchronizing the data transfer between the storage device and the GPU. Overall, the Direct Storage API provides a simple and efficient way for applications to access storage devices and transfer data to and from the GPU through the D3D12 driver. So next we'll take a look at how to implement a Direct Storage 1.1 optimized application. Intel's Expanse demo is paired with the usage of sampler feedback and virtual textures and has an advantage over more classic streaming approach. This demo incorporates Direct Storage 1.1 for Windows with GPU decompression. We will examine this demo later on in this presentation. Typically, an entire texture MIP level is loaded when needed, which often results in an increased demand for a larger memory pool. However, the virtual texture approach can add overhead if not managed correctly. Direct storage can stream vertex data, textures, sound data, and other types of large or complex data files. This demo has a total size of texture assets on disk close to 350 gigabytes since each planet treats each texture as its own unique asset. The texture streamer can render the texture MIPS needed with just around 230 megabytes plus 128 megabytes staging buffer for direct storage. This is a debug view of MIPS sampler. The Expanse demo draws 1,000 planets, each one using 16K by 16K texture. This results in approximately 350 gigabytes of textures on the hard drive, which is way too much for the available VRAM to render all at once. Here's the key for what these colors represent. Each of these colors represent a MIP level. The demo uses a texture streamer that loads only the specific MIP of the texture needed by the sphere in that frame based on its distance from the camera. This information is obtained using the sampler feedback tech, which allows the GPU to render the sphere with the correct MIP level of the texture. This data is read on the CPU and loaded using Direct Storage 1.1, which is fast enough to provide the data usually by the next frame. The planets are always moving, so they are constantly requesting different portions of the texture to be streamed in. This debug view of the MIP sampler feedback shows each color as a specific MIP portion of the texture. Without Direct Storage 1.1, regular file loading can still be used, but it will be significantly slower and provide less bandwidth. The flow of Intel's Expanse demo for every frame is roughly this. The rendering on the GPU is writing an opaque min MIP map feedback using write sampler feedback in the shader code. The opaque feedback gets resolved to be CPU visible with the resolve feedback API call. The feedback is used to create a list of needed texture MIP portions to load in the texture atlas and a list of MIPs no longer needed that will get evicted. And direct storage will load the requested MIP and the application will synchronize the calls using fences. The system implemented in the Expanse demo provides lockless mechanisms that allow tasks to run in parallel instead of being pipelined across frames. In particular, shaders running on the GPU do not wait for data to be fully resident in GPU memory, and data is continuously loaded, evicted, and mapped without blocking locks or waits. The CPU and GPU work together in parallel, no waits for data as they are both in sync. With that, let's take a look at some code samples to see how to implement direct storage requests in your game. Direct Storage provides a deceptively simple API that abstracts all the synchronization between and within devices. This API naturally opens an extensible framework for just-in-time framework streaming. It is a read-only API. Source can be files on disk or memory. 
Destination can be memory or D3D12 resource, such as buffers and textures. Completion for the requests is synchronized via events or D3D12 fences. Direct storage objects to handle are factory, file handle, queue, and request. Create queue is used to create direct storage queues which act like D3D12 command queues. Use one queue to upload from files and if necessary, another queue to upload from memory allocations. There is no way to synchronize between direct storage queues. For more information, check out the link on the screen. The following code shows how the Expanse demo fills the direct storage request structure for a tile load. Every request loads a single reserved resource tile from a file. Decompression is activated simply by setting the compression format field of the request and by setting source size not equal compress size. GDeflate is the hardware decompression format on the GPU, optimized by Intel under the hood as we saw in the previous slides. The uncompressed destination size of a reserved resource tile is defined by D3D12 to be a constant 64 kilobytes. The file header contains the compression format and a lookup table for the per tile compressed size and file offset. A unique aspect of the sample is the conversion from a linear index into a destination texture atlas and a destination tile coordinate. In queue requests for each load, there is no alignment restriction. Individual requests can complete in any order. Direct storage will auto-submit work internally if queues fill, and in queue requests may briefly block in such cases. You want as much available work as possible to maximize SSD performance, so in queue many requests before calling in queue fence or submit. Last thing to do after the request creation is to launch the work and queue the fence after many requests. And like in a GPU, submit containing, execute command list, call submit. This will add or resume direct storage work. So let's take a look at some demos. So as the planets are constantly moving, the MIP map feedback is requesting frames for every new texture portion to stream in. The CPU is receiving a MIP map feedback from the GPU, creating a list of needed MIP maps to load through direct storage 1.1 APIs then evicting MIP that are no longer needed. Compressed texture MIP are streamed in its original compressed state, sent to the GPU, and finally decompressed on the GPU using gdeflate commands. From the debug visualization, notice the MIP map feedback and how the needed texture request changes over time. In the demo, a new direct storage trace capture and playback utility has been added so that direct storage performance can be analyzed without the overhead of rendering. For example, to capture and play back the direct storage request and submits for 500 stressful frames with a staging buffer size of 128 megabytes, use these command line parameters to get bandwidth recap stats from Expanse. The following parameters should be adjusted in your game in order to achieve the maximum bandwidth. Mapping time, pipelining, request size, and number of requests in flight. Let's take a look at some of these methods. Update tile mappings is a method that effectively updates the mappings of tile locations in reserved resources to memory locations in a resource heap. One potential issue is the tile allocations in the heap can become fragmented relative to resources. Specifically, the CPU for update tile mappings gradually increases, causing the streaming system to stall waiting for pending operations to complete. To mitigate this, use more smaller heaps to reduce memory fragmentation. When decompressing from disk, one important parameter that should be set to avoid serialization is the size of the staging buffer. Set staging buffer size is a simple method used to set the size of the buffer for staging resources, which are just temporary resources used to transfer data between the CPU and GPU. Remember, this size is used for multiple internal buffers, upload, staging, and decompression output. Experiment with different sizes with your application. We found 128 megabytes provided good performance for the Expanse demo's number of requests. With respect to machine occupancy and pipelining, SSD and GPU are batch processors. This means the latency is the same whether it's processing one thing or several things. So you want your SSD and GPU to maximize the potential parallel work. Here's an optimization tip. Minimize the number of submissions and maximize number of requests. Switching gears to Microsoft's bulk load demo. Microsoft provided a benchmark that computes the bandwidth achievable while bulk loading data using GPU decompression. Using this demo, we loaded about 1,000 models and 4,000 textures on an NVMe solid state drive with an i9-12900K on an Intel A770 GPU. Every few seconds, the demo is reloading all models and textures, displaying the time in seconds and the achieved bandwidth. This demo was benchmarked with uncompressed assets and no runtime decompression. 
To compare, we benchmarked compressed assets on CPU versus GPU decompression. Let's take a look at the results. With no asset compression, the load time is 1.34 seconds. With CPU decompression, the load time has a modest reduction of 1.2 seconds. In GPU decompression, the load time is more than half and the bandwidth is nearly triple when compared to no asset compression. With the support of GPU decompression on direct storage 1.1, the CPU is busy only for the duration of requesting the resource through the direct storage API and to send the compressed data to the GPU, effectively saving bandwidth. The decompression happens directly on the GPU using hardware-optimized meta commands. Okay, so what we learned from the demo and their results, loading a large bulk of data, for example, a large game level, in less than a second using almost no CPU time to stream and decompress just by using a simple and robust API. Advanced graphic workloads such as open world games can load assets constantly, treating high-speed storage as a hot storage rather than a cold one. Streaming technology and virtual textures enables a scene containing hundreds of gigabytes of assets on disk to be supported by one one thousandth as much physical memory, unleashing game designers and artists' creativity. All right, so concluding, current Intel Iris XE graphics processors and Intel discrete GPUs support Direct Storage 1.1, so you can start building applications using it for GPU decompression and game asset streaming today. Thanks for watching. To learn more, follow the links provided.